Hello game fans and welcome to another review from Gaming Debugged. Today we're looking at Summer in Mara, a game that I've been looking forward to playing for a long time. So let's get started. In Summer in Mara you'll have to take care of your own island, harvest your crops, create new tools and buildings, and sail with your boat to discover new islands and secrets. The controls are easy enough to use, from kicking trees to gathering apples, and even a bit of mining. But is Summer in Mara a washout or a summer of fun? Here's my review of Summer in Mara. Summer in Mara is a beautiful adventure with farming, crafting and exploring mechanics set in a beautiful archipelago. You play Koa, a young girl rescued as a baby from a storm at sea by a kindly island caretaker. Koa grows up on the island learning about the subtle balance between herself and the island. When Koa's new mother disappears, she must venture beyond the island to find her. The game starts with some beautiful cutscenes and a tutorial level to get the player used to the various controls and mechanics. Once ready, the game introduces sailing, as you must travel between the islands to solve the mystery and repair your home island. As the adventure expands to the other island, Koa has to do a lot of fetch quests. To speak to somebody in the lighthouse, you need to talk to the fisherman, but the fisherman won't talk to you unless you give him a rod. To get a rod, you need to get some twine and a stick. To get the twine, you need to buy the seeds to grow the plant. To grow the plant, you have to go back to your island and plant the seeds and wait for two days. When you have the twine and correctly prepared the wood, then you can craft the rod. Once you give it to him, he tells you to go and talk to somebody else. It was a bit like an episode of The Mandalorian. What else did he say? Now, I don't mind fetch quests. I grew up with all the dizzy games, so I am used to getting objects to pass through a level. However, modern games are much bigger and now use a marker system, a detailed diary or map entries to make a quest clear. Features that Mara sadly lacks. And as this is targeted at children, this really should be simpler. Maps are rudimentary and there are no direction arrows or marker systems to show the player where to go, meaning that you'll spend a lot of time wandering around for no reason. Now, I really wanted to love this game, and if I had time to immerse myself in it and learn all about the islands and the maps and, and the people in it, I might have loved it more. But the lack of instruction meant that I kept getting lost and frustrated, even using YouTube to solve some simple quests. While searching, I did find that other gamers were having issues with sailing, but this wasn't the case for me, and it looked like the recent patches seems to have fixed a lot of these launch issues. The whimsical story is lovely, the array of beautiful hand-drawn characters are amazing, and the eye-bleeding vibrancy of the island is truly wonderful. But fiddly trading mechanics, translation niggles, and lack of direction will frustrate many gamers. And yet there is so much to love in this game, from the 40 plus interactive characters, to the crabs with personal messages on the beach for all the fans. And that all the animated cutscenes are really well drawn and really well done, and it will draw you into this deep and colourful world. As much as the dialogue is through text and not speech, younger players may struggle. This is also exacerbated by some of the shoddy translations. Overall, Summer in Mara is a calm, relaxing world with a handmade look and exciting narrative. The various mechanics are easy to use, and players will lose themselves in this beautiful world in more way than one. Wayfinding frustrations and clunky trading mechanics taint an otherwise fun-packed adventure full of heartwarming lessons about nature and our place within it. This is a lovely game and I would welcome many more in the vein, but when designing for children, studios do need to have extra consideration on character audio and clear direction markers to further a player's enjoyment. But overall, I would definitely recommend that you give this game a go. Uh, it does have these lovely stories in there and it has these lovely life lessons in there and the visuals are beautiful. Um, but you do need some patience in order to work your way through some of the quests. Uh, so if this review has been useful, then please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, press that bell and all that jazz. And I'll be back with another video very soon. Finish him.